Our next speaker is someone who is a peer of mine. We happen to uh, have offices right next door to each other. We share uh, an office, and her office is literally right next door to mine. I am a huge fan of hers. However, this week, I have come to be a bigger fan of her husband, who is here uh, with their young son, uh, Nico, and who has been gracious enough for me in this family-friendly environment as a single dad trying to organize this conference to take care of my daughter, Nisha, on occasion. So the Kearns family, I just can't get enough of either of you. Uh, Abby runs the Cloud Foundry Foundation at the Linux Foundation. She was their first fellow. She is a technologist, a leader. Please welcome her to the stage. Oh, I love his rock necklaces. My daddy, Alabama. Mama, Louisiana. You mix that Negro with that Creole, make a Texas Bama. Oh, I like my baby hair with baby hair and afro. I like my Negro nose with Jackson 5 nights. Everybody awake? I earned all this money, but they never take the country out me. I got hot sauce in my bag, swag. Everybody awake now? All right. A little Beyonce in the morning. Um, my talk today is um, practicing a, a, a new talk track, but I couldn't imagine a better lead-in from Al's talk and, and even Dan's talk on, on where I want to go with the story today. Oh, hey, thanks. So bear with me. It's a new talk. So we're going to talk about the makers of Marvels today. And I'm going to talk about Cloud Foundry, but first I want to talk about inspiration. Every single one of us in this room today has the power to change, power to change our organizations, our communities, and our industries. I want to go back about 4,500 years ago to the pyramids of Giza. And if Pharaoh had a great idea, we should build a pyramid. And but that didn't turn that into the actual outcome, did it? It was the creators, the people that spent years and tens of thousands of people that turned that into reality. And not just a reality, one of the seven wonders of the modern world. And let's go flash forward a little bit further. The Transcontinental Railroad. While some barons had the idea of changing transportation, it was the architects, the engineers, the creators that turned that into a reality that changed the landscape of our country. Let's come forward a little bit further. How many here have a smartphone? How many have two? <laughs> the smartphone has become an amazing tool. It is, it is something that I would rather lose my wallet than my smartphone right now. It's how I order groceries. It's how I get to work. It's how I check in for my flight. In fact, we're in Tahoe. It's how we know what the weather is. It is important. But Steve Jobs didn't make it important. Steve Jobs thought of a great new phone. But what made the iPhone what it is? It's the developers, the creators of those applications. That's what's made it important. That's what's changed the way that it's perceived. And it's changed the way that I think about technology and my products. So I'm going to posit that developers are the heroes. Those of you in this room that are developers, you have the opportunity to change our world. Not just change the world, but change the way we engage with companies and change the way companies engage with us as consumers. An example, or I mean, and this kind of ties into where Al was going, digital transformation. I know that everyone here has heard that word, that phrase. In fact, those of us in the Valley probably think it's last year's word. But it's important, because all of these organizations that were previously non-technology companies are now asking their teams to fail faster, to innovate more, to be more responsive to customers. These organizations are becoming software companies. I'm going to use a banking example, because it's the easiest one for me, and it really impacts my day to day. Five years ago, if you had said, you will be doing all of your banking on your mobile phone, I would have laughed. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I like to go in the bank. Right? OK, maybe not. But 
I would have said, oh, I'll use my computer. Why would I be doing this on my phone? And but now, through an application on my phone, I can now deposit checks. I can pay bills, I can transfer money, I can send money to my friends because I hate to carry cash. I can do all of those things on my mobile device. And that may seem simplistic, but it's changed the way that I think about my bank, it's changed the way I engage with my bank, and it's changed the way the bank engages with me. I'm one of millions of customers to my bank, but they're leveraging technology to engage me in new ways. They're reaching me at my home, they're allowing me 24-7 the ability to do anything I would like to do with my bank. And so these organizations that are changing, that are digitally transforming, they're becoming software companies, they're changing how their code is written, how it's deployed, but more importantly, how they continue to iterate on that code and take that customer feedback and change and deploy new code. They're changing the way systems are managed secured, and more importantly, scaled. If I'm one of millions, how do they scale to continue to meet that and ensure that application's always available? So when we talk about taking an idea to market, taking an idea and turn it into the reality and put it in the hands of customers, we talk about velocity. That's what's important. That's what people are looking for. How do I take it from an idea to my customers as quickly as possible? And that leads me to talking about what is the value of a cloud application platform or the value of Cloud Foundry. A platform that makes it easier for developers to develop and deploy code as quickly as possible and get it out the door. I'm going to give a concrete example of this. Comcast. How many of here have heard of Comcast? Everybody, right? For those of us in San Francisco, that is one of our two choices. <laughs> but Comcast recognized several years ago they need to change the way they engage with their customers and with their teams. So a couple of years ago, they looked into Cloud Foundry. And they got a couple of developers to do a couple of apps and decided to start developing on that. And in a couple of years, they went from a couple of apps and a couple of developers to 900 developers innovating on Cloud Foundry and running business critical applications on Cloud Foundry like Comcast.com, Customer Portal, Sales Portal. And this allowed them to really rethink the way technology changed Comcast and the way Comcast engaged with technology and by extension their teams and their users. To quote one of the developers, for the first time ever, we fully upgraded cloud infrastructure with zero impact in production during business hours, peak business hours. Imagine the change that has in an organization and their teams. Their teams are no longer working at night on Friday nights at midnight to do changes. And they can put things out there faster and really get that customer feedback faster. Or another example, HCSC. For those of you that are not familiar, it is the largest customer-owned health insurer in the United States. It wasn't that long ago when the executives asked someone to develop a new app at HCSC, they would reply with, we need 35 developers in eight to nine months. That's a long time. They started investing in Cloud Foundry, but not just Cloud Foundry, because Cloud Foundry isn't magic, but in continuous delivery practices and cloud native application architectures. And now they can develop an app with four developers in six to eight weeks. That starts to re have real impact on the business. One of their quotes that I really, really like, and I'm gonna talk about it a lot more, is it took us 15 months to build our old mobile app we did the new one at labs in 14 weeks. We learned to work in a new way. I think that's the important takeaway, is we learn to work in a new way. And that's what digital transformation is, isn't it? Learning to work in a new way. And use technology in ways to fundamentally change your business and the way you engage with your users. So the value of a cloud application platform is to make it easier to write that code make those changes, change your business, and get products out the door faster. 
but we're here at an open source conference. Cloud Foundry is also an open source project. And I'm super passionate about Cloud Foundry and the fact that it's open source because it allows us to do two things. Ensure that diverse minds are participating in the project, and that drives our innovation. One of the things that I'm a firm believer in is that you cannot ever claim to be innovative if you do not have diverse people sitting around that table. Diverse organizations, diverse people of diverse backgrounds. And I think Dan really teed it up nicely in his talk. If everyone is, looks the same and thinks the same, how are you gonna really be innovative and change things? And so that's where we have an awesome opportunity in the open source community is really bringing together a broad set of people and of minds and of backgrounds to solve hard problems. One of those was the Open Service Broker API. In fact, we started the conversation about that at this event last year. How do we take the Cloud Foundry Service Broker API, and, which is a way of connecting services to Cloud Foundry, and make that accessible across many platforms? And so we got together and formed a little working group, and brought together some amazing people from Google, Fujitsu, IBM, Pivotal, SAP, Red Hat, and said, let's make this API accessible on any platform so that services and ISVs can write these services and make them accessible for users, irrespective of the platform. So that changes a couple of things. It changes the way we think about our service broker, which you know I happen to love, but it also changes the way we think about our community and how we can work together to solve hard problems. And so that's what's the most exciting thing about this conference and this event that GEMS puts on, is the ability to bring together diverse people to solve hard problems in open source. And while I'm talking about open source, I really have to recognize the amazing community that sits behind Cloud Foundry. In fact, we're on two slides now. We're at nearly 70 members strong of our organization, of people, diverse companies, that bring together the best capabilities to make sure that Cloud Foundry continues to be the most innovative platform out there. And so as I think about the marriage of these two things, a cloud application platform that allows you to develop code faster, open source that allows you to bring together a diverse set of people to solve a hard problem, we end up with Cloud Foundry. Not quite yet. <laughs> I got like 12 more slides, Jim. <laughs> Sorry, I have to give Jim a hard time. He's been here all week. So we have ended up with Cloud Foundry, a project that I am extremely passionate about, and I want you to be as well. And so if you're asking yourself, how do I get involved? How do I find out more? Well, we have two summits. You can come learn, network with other developers, learn how to develop cloud-native applications. You could join our community. We always want more committers and contributors broadening the pool and ensuring we continue to innovate. Champion adoption of a platform like Cloud Foundry in your organization, changing the way your business thinks about technology. But if you take nothing else away from my talk, Think big. Each and every one of you in this room has an opportunity to change your organization, your community, our industry, and the world. So have fun. <laughs>